uh, when I was hired from NBC, at NBC, uh, I worked radio for eight, nine years, uh, and just before they sold the radio division, I moved over to the TV side. Uh, I worked in the union that Bill mentioned, NABET, that's the union for um, engineering technicians in Chicago. Uh, I worked uh, within the union as a, a, an engineer and as an engineering supervisor. Uh, when I went to television, I worked in uh, videotape, back when videotape was two inches. Uh, you may still see that in museums somewhere, yeah, two inch tape. Uh, our reel is damn heavy. Um, worked with uh, two inch tape, one inch tape, three quarter tape. Um, then started working um, in what was called master control, uh, which was um, the uh, transmi uh, transmitter remote controls, uh, bringing in microwave news feeds, um, the um, uh, uh, sat satellite, when satellite first began, uh, I actually predate satellite, that's how much of a dinosaur I am, uh, when it was all phone lines, but we, we transitioned to satellite, started putting satellite receivers up and satellite uh, transmitters in the trucks. Uh, so I was, trans uh, Master Control brought in all these feeds and sent them back out again. Uh, did some t uh, TDing, technical director for news shows, um, and then um, as I was doing more and more of this, I said, I want, to, I want to do more than what I can do within the restrictions of the union. So I went back to school, got a, a master's degree, uh, went to DePaul, got a master's degree in business administration, started working some projects for NBC uh, when we moved from the Merchandise Mart to what's the NBC Tower. Uh, I was on the design team for the NBC Tower and spent a year there while we were building the building, getting the technical infrastructure in place. Uh, when we bought uh, Telemundo, I spent a year at Grant Place, which is where WSNS TV was, getting them ready to move into NBC Tower. Uh, and then I, uh, an opportunity opened up in management, and I moved up to uh, become manager of technical operations for news. Uh, the scope of that position was managing day-to-day -day news operations. All the uh, news photographers reported to me. I had to purchase and provide them with all their equipment, all the cameras, all the trucks, all the satellite gear, all the microwave gear. Uh, I also managed the uh, uh, transmission area, which was like master control, satellites, uh, microwaves in and out. Uh, when we got into um, uh, digital um, away from tape into, into file transfers and, and digital, the digital world. Uh, we, I started the first uh, media management group there to archive, uh, edit and archive all this video that we've been collecting and find a way to re retrieve it. It's not just a library of rows and rows and rows of shelves of tape anymore. It's all in a computer and it's easy to get it in. It's harder to find it again and get it back out. So media management became much more important. So I was uh, created the media management group over there. Um, I think my, the most challenging part of my job was, Bill mentioned one of his, his projects, uh, I did planning and logistics for not just the day-to-day -day news operation, but any special events. Um, uh, su Super Bowl games, uh, preseason Bears football, um, Blackhawks, uh, uh, Stanley Cups, uh, victory parades for the White Sox and the, and the uh, Blackhawks. Uh, election night when you've got cameras at a dozen different locations. Uh, that was my job to, to plan all this out, to figure out how, how to allocate people and resources to, to get them uh, the show they wanted. Uh, also did the auto show uh, many times, did the Chicago Marathon many times. Uh, and have been uh, received uh, 11 Emmy Awards for my, uh, my technical production skills, which is very nice. They look great on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, but most of what we do is live, live television. It's, it's you're either ready or you're not. The clock says go, we go. Uh, and, uh, and anything happens. You, get, you plan it all out, but when it actually hits the air, you never know what's going to happen. And, and part, of the de part of my s responsibility was having everything prepped so that when things went wrong, and they always go wrong, we could recover and we had backup plans and, and alternatives because you're on the air. You've got to fill an hour or two hours or whatever it is and they don't look kindly to when there's nothing up on the screen. Almost every Chicago broadcaster is, uh, has a union contract with either uh, NABET uh, the National Association of Broadcast um, Employees and Technicians, or uh, IBEW, the uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Uh, those are the two unions that, that have broadcasting arms. Uh, they're nationwide unions. They all have Chicago, they both have Chicago locals. And almost any station you deal with in this market uh, is a union shop. Um, uh, and all the major ones are. So if, if you're looking for entry into any craft, uh, engineering, uh, technician, stagehands, directing, uh, arts, or, or graphic artists, uh, almost everybody is unionized. So to, uh, to get into the shop, you either have to be a member of the union or you can join the union once you get in. Well, for the employee, uh, it outlines your, your working conditions, uh, how many hours you can work without, you know, before they have to pay you overtime, they have to pay you overtime, they can't, you're not salaried, you're, you're an hourly employee. So if you work more than 40 hours, you get time and a half. Uh, if you work uh, overnights, you get extra money. If you work holidays, you get extra money. You get a set number of days off, you get a set number of vacation days based on how long you've been there. You get uh, health benefits. Um, and most importantly, your salary is, is set. Uh, from the management side, uh, the, the, the asset to the union, again, is work rules. Everybody knows the playing field. Everyone knows what's, what's, uh, what the company can and cannot do in terms of scheduling people. Um, it makes a more stable workforce. Uh, there are definite jurisdictional lines for, for skills. Uh, if you're a technical director, you're not directing the show. You're switching it. If you're, if you're a director, you're not rolling any equipment. You're not rolling clips. You're not, you're not handling any equipment. You're, you're, dire you're directing people uh, and, and instructing others what to do, but you're not touching any equipment yourself. Uh, if, you're, if you're not a stagehand, you're not moving the chair from here to there on the set. So it's... it's uh, it's just work rules that, that everyone learns to live with, but it's not the most flexible operation. Obviously, a non-union shop, which m almost all the smaller markets are, uh, you, uh, there's a lot more flexibility and, and a lot more opportunity for people. If you come in as a stagehand and decide, oh, you know, it looks like, it, I think I could, I could direct a show or I could be a technical director, it's at a union shop, it's hard to do that. At a non-union shop, that's, that's easy. Not a lot of hands went up for technical careers, but I worked 37 years behind the camera. Uh, you don't see a lot of people working 37 years in front of the camera. It's a lot more stable behind the camera. Um, from an operations standpoint, uh, let's start the control room. You've got uh, a technical director who switches the show. Uh, you'd have an audio engineer. Uh, you'd have a graphics person who puts up chirons or whatever uh, graphic device you're using, uh, a per person running the, pro to the teleprompter, uh, sometimes an audio assist who's out on the set helping people with their microphones. Uh, you're going to have people uh, editing uh, clips, editing news stories. Um, you're going to have the cameramen in the field who shoot and edit and feed back those, those clips. You'll have um, 
uh, media management people who keep track of all this video. When it comes to internships, it's important to uh, be prepared, to know what it is you're looking for and to kind of sound out the market to see what's available. Uh, most uh, radio and TV stations do have intern programs, uh, but they also have very strict deadlines. So it's important to find out uh, wh what their application process is and when those applications have to be in and to, to help sell yourself as to what it is uh, you're looking for, what you hope to get out of the internship program. When I'm considering uh, hiring for a position, uh, when I look at a, a collection of ap applicants, generally skill levels are, are comparable. Uh, it's hard from a resume or from a demo reel to, to really judge skill levels. Uh, what I find important is attitude. When I interview somebody, uh, I want somebody who shows a good attitude, who shows they're engaged in, in what it is I'm doing and what I need uh, from an employee. Um, and I will hire somebody with, with an excellent attitude over somebody uh, who has tremendous skills but uh, is not that engaged. Uh, it's, it's important to an employer uh, th to show that you're, you're a good employee and that you value uh, uh, what it is they're doing and the product they're, they're creating uh, and to be able to demonstrate how you can help improve their product.